greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on this video i really do appreciate it today we'll see how to create the ultimate gaming and media center device using orange pi zero what you will need is orange pi zero board a good sd card of minimum 8 gigs retro orange pi os image a power supply video cables a keyboard and optionally a gaming controller so this is my orange pi zero setup I have my Orange Pi Zero over here and I'll be providing it power from my custom made UPS power supply over here. UPS is being charged from the wall adapter over here. I have connected a USB keyboard at the back port and the video output cable goes out to the video capture card and video capture card goes to my laptop screen recording in the cheese recording software. So after searching for getting various emulators to work on my XFCE installation on Orange Pi Zero, I wondered if there is a better way of doing things. And then I came across RetroOrangePi.org. It is a gaming and media distribution center specifically designed for boards with a 3 CPU and Mali 400 GPU. It has been compiled for various Orange Pi boards including the Orange Pi Zero. And the good news is that the build is now out of beta. So it is quite stable. The key features of this uh, Retro Orange Pi is that it is built on Ambient and Retro Pi. So Ambient is my choice of operating system and Retro Pi is a emulation station which was uh, first in a designed for the Raspberry Pi and has been ported to Orange Pi Zero now. It contains a desktop environment if you want to move files. It runs Kodi Krypton with hardware acceleration which means that our media center project can be combined with gaming. Multiple emulators and a few games with ability to add your ROMs yourself. Very important. Overscan fix in audio video outputs which is the only video out in Orange Pi Zero. And ability to configure Wi-Fi and many more. So you can go to RetroOrangePi.org. There is a single O in the URL. I'll be providing all the URLs in the description. You can go to retroorangepie.org and scroll down to the download section and over here there will be a full version of Orange Pi Zero as well as a slim version. Choose the full version, download it. Once you have downloaded it, open a terminal. Go to the download section, uh, you should have already extracted it. Then use the dd command dd space bs equal to 1m space input file equal to retro orange pi image output file should be slash dev slash mnc block 0 or whatever your memory card is then conv equal to fsync hit enter it should be run as sudo enter password and wait for it to work it will take at least 5 to 10 minutes to write your card depending on the size of the image that it is quite high up to 4 gigs and also depending on the speed of your memory card connect the audio video cable to your tv connect your usb gamepad or keyboard and mouse or both insert your freshly written sd card and power it on as you can see the boot sequence has started already and it will take a long time initially to set up the SD card so don't worry about it and you may wonder that the screen looks uh, very bad uh, that is because of the poor quality of the easy cap device and not any fault of uh, retro orange pi or orange pi zero if we connect the orange pi zero directly to the tv then it will look very clear and there will be no artifacts as it can be seen in this video so if you can see to the left bottom part it says automatic install resizing sd card generating ssh keys and rebooting into the retro orange pi so this is a standard procedure and we'll have to wait for it to complete okay so it's been uh, more than 15 minutes and it wasn't going anywhere so i thought of pressing some enter key and it uh, directly went into the command prompt if that happens then uh, the default user id is root and the password is orange pi o r a n g e p i
Okay, so now our retro orange pie emulation station has started and the first screen that you can see is a welcome screen. It says uh, no gamepads detected and so you will have to hold a button on your keyboard or a gamepad to set up the button. So I'll be holding enter and as you can see the keyboard popped up and now it's asking for uh, up, down, left, right arrow keys. I'll use up down left right then start is uh, enter select a shift then a b x y you can choose whatever you want i'll be choosing a z and then there are many other buttons that you can configure if you have analog sticks or uh, some other controller i don't want it to set right now so i'll skip it press any button and hold and it will keep skipping those buttons All right, so now we are at the OK button. Uh, so if you press enter or any other button, it won't work. We'll have to press the A button that you configured. And there we have it. So this screen that we are uh, seeing right now, it's an emulation station screen. So emulation station is a front end and it provides all these kinds of emulators, the Amiga, Apple II, Dreamcast. And as you can see over here, the Kodi is also pre-installed. So there is Nintendo 64, Mega Drive, Neo Geo, Nintendo ports, PSP, PlayStation, and this RetroPie option. So if we first go into the RetroPie option, as you can see to the left bottom side, uh, there is only two options. One is uh, select and the other is menu. You press uh, A to select and you will enter the RetroPie option. Uh, here you can configure a lot of uh, items uh, such as Bluetooth and file manager, RetroArts, RetroNet, RetroPie setup, RetroPie Wi-Fi and all such. Now it is recommended by the Retro Orange Pie team that you don't use sudo apt get update upgrade uh, because they have many customizations and it will break if you update it. So keep it the way it is and try to configure it. So I will enter the Retro Pie setup. And you can see here there are many other options. I will perform a reboot. So now it is to be noticed that uh, since we are out of the emulation station, uh, the setup keys will not work. You will have to use our keyboard default, which you use in the command line. And I will perform a reboot. Now it may so happen that your system will freeze and when that happens, you can see if it has frozen or not by pressing the numlock key. Usually if there is some random garbage errors, so it might have frozen. So you can just uh, do a hard reboot by plugging out the power supply and then plugging it back in. As you can see, this is the default start screen of our retro orange pie don't mind the flickering that is going on that is because of my easy cap usb capture device otherwise the screen would look quite nice okay now our emulation station has started up And you can see that there are no ROMs currently here. So A is to launch and B is to back. We go to menu and 
in the system remember to press a to select uh, and b to back and not press enter it will uh, escape the menu option so you can enter the audio settings enable background music and don't go into the display settings because uh, it will cause a lot of problems and it will uh, corrupt your card uh, the display won't work then there are the ui settings that you would want there are many options for emulators uh, if you want such as nes so you can see what kind of roms have been saved so now if you press the button that you have configured for the uh, start so i have configured it as enter you will go over this main menu you can enter the app section and then you can see that there is an option for desktop so if you press desktop then it will start an armian desktop this will quit out of our emulation station and you can see that our desktop has started up this is very useful uh, if you want just a simple desktop to use and it's also useful if you want to add any files and configure it so currently i have a flash drive which contains a movie if i plug the flash drive in it should pop up you will need a mouse to use this so after plugging in the mouse you can explore your drive as you can see there is a movie over here if you want to play it you can play it using the vlc media player so if you have a a flash drive containing all your roms then you can use those roms and put it in this retropie folder so in retropie folder you can see the roms folder so in this roms folder you can go up to any rom that you want such as uh, snes so all these are arranged in alphabetical order you can go to the bottom and there is an snes folder paste your roms in this folder and when you exit it uh, it will directly go and take you to the emulation station when you log out you will directly go to your emulation station next option is you can go to kodi and once you go to kodi you will again have to launch it using a and it will quit the emulation station and directly start booting kodi now remember that orange pi 0 is a very small device with low processing power so it may take a lot of time sometimes to start up initially and if your application is starting up just for the first time then it will definitely take a long time so as you can see here the kodi default options are all available and in the media sources we also have the disk image that is our flash drive so again here since we are not in the emulation station we will have to use the default kodi keyboard options such as up down left right and enter buttons now again we'll try to play the movie all right so as you can see i have copied the super mario nes file nintendo entertainment system to the nes folder in the roms folder of retro pi and then after doing a reboot and then when the uh, retro orange pi starts then you can go to the nintendo entertainment system open it and you will see that there is a super mario game already available here start it up
and you can see that the game has started up so which means that our configuration to make our orange pi zero a complete gaming system is a complete success so i'll escape it to escape uh, press select and start at the same time uh, now what lessons have been learned uh, don't open a file that has a very high resolution of video in it uh, the orange pi zero just crashed and the memory card got corrupted so i had to flash a new memory card and install it i think it is a bug with kodi but we'll have to explore it out further and the second is use a class 10 SD card as I have mentioned in my previous videos also. If you use a class 10 SD card then it will run quite smoothly and if you use a class 4 or class 6 then it will slow down considerably and you will not be able to play any games. So that's it for uh, this tutorial. See you next time on harshgandhi.in. Bye bye. Take care.